Bowl 52 champions, Lincoln Financial Field in Philadelphia, PA. Today, we've got a good NFC matchup on tap between the Minnesota Vikings and the Philadelphia Eagles. Here's the kicker, Jake Elliott, ready to get this one started. And off we go from Lincoln Financial Field. And no run back here on the opening kickoff as we'll start at the 25. Cook as they begin on the ground. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. Well, that's just a pile of bodies there, and that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play? It was only a three-yard run, but for both sides, they had to walk away from that feeling like, okay, I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. Here's second and seven now from the 28. Now Cousins. Open here, Adam Thielen. And he'll be tackled right on the chalk of the 45. 17 yards, first down, Vikings. And that's a more than acceptable read right there because it's zone coverage, so timing is everything. This time he waits for his man to come open, puts it right on him, and they pick up a first down. First down, here's the run with Cook. And they went the wrong way there. Losing yardage back at the 43-yard line. Josh Sweat coming in strong and dropping him behind the line of scrimmage. That was well played there defensively. Two tight ends in the formation, which essentially gave them seven blockers up front. Hard to imagine with all that size and beef that they could let a tackler through. But that's exactly what happened. A loss resulted. Now they contend with a second and 12 after the loss. To throw is Cousins. Setting up the screen for Cook. Only a yard there. Sniffed out well defensively, and it brings up third. Good reactions there defensively. That screen was a little slow in developing, and they shut that one down with little game. The Eagles call on the extra defensive back here as they prepare for a stop on third down. Throwing, Cousins. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. Well, they certainly came out firing in this one, and while that one was incomplete, I can't imagine that'll be the last shot that they take in this game. Now Cousins on fourth down. He rifles one that's intercepted. That right there is the inauspicious start that they were hoping to avoid the turnover on the first possession. I love how you use those college-bound words like that, inauspicious. Well done. I really appreciate that. Thank but you. here's the thing for me. I'm just wondering if their game plan is incorrect. You know, I think they felt like they could come in and throw it around pretty well. That interception early, they may rethink how they go about attacking. They start on the ground here at Sanders. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave them with a second and three. Counting down toward the midway point in quarter one. Throwing on second and three. Hurts. Oh, hit as he throws there, incomplete. I think he had to unload that one before he wanted to. He was right up in his grill. I think he was a dentist there without a license, don't you? <laughs> Just not enough time for the play to develop. Just lucky it wasn't a fumble, really. And a big loss here as he's taken down. And Daniil Hunter, he's the one who gets in there and brings him down to the ground. 
always up for a visiting team to come in and set the tone on defense. In fact, when we talked with them prior to the game, they said they wanted this home crowd to feel like they had to hide their valuables when they were in town. <laughs> well, the home crowd quiet now early. See if their offense can take over and get some points on the board. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. Here comes Rager. That's going to go in the books as a 55-yard punt. Well done. And it will be Vikings ball first and 10. Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. Remember last time out, they threw the interception on their first drive. Good news, their defense backed him up, so it's... Oh, he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. And the Eagles are going to take possession of the football. Well, they take a whole lot of investigation to figure out why they're still sitting at zero on the scoreboard because their quarterback's got to wake up and start reading defense a heck of a lot better after throwing a second interception. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Hurts a handoff to Sanders. And he gets stopped up at the 31 after a gain of maybe a yard. Yeah, things were pretty stacked up there in the middle of the line. A lot of bodies, not much space. I think ultimately, he was fortunate to get anything out of that run. On second and nine. Hurts. He lets this one fly toward the back of the end zone. And that will be incomplete. Tried to dial up the long way way out there, but it'll be third down. There is something to a game plan with trying to keep a defense honest with a guy with that type of speed. You do so. Send him deep. Try to throw some air under it and hope you connect downfield. On that play, they run successful. This is Smith with a grab. And he gets it all the way down inside the 10 and mark him at the 5. They'll run with Sanders. And he's in for an Eagles touchdown. Miles Sanders, a 5-yard touchdown run. And the Eagles take the early turnover and convert it into an opening touchdown. And his kick is no good. An inauspicious start here kicking-wise as this one stays a 6-0 game. So with the missed PAT in his rearview mirror, he goes back out to kick this one off. Kenny Duwagu now out of his end zone. And that decision to bring it out ends up not being a good one. Costs him about five yards as he's tackled at the 20. Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. And for this offense, Charles, you got to think kind of crucial here to put something together on this drive because remember last time out, they threw the interception on the very first play. And you can't afford to let this defense keep building any more momentum. They're playing awfully well, and they're awfully confident right now. To me, it's time to attack and take some of that momentum back. But make sure you're selective in doing so. Understand where you want to throw the football and make sure it's open before the ball leaves you. And the third interception thrown by Cousins. And the Eagles are going to get possession of the football as time will run out on this first quarter of play. 6-0 our score after one. And they'll begin by running the option. 
And Hurts able to show off some of that elusiveness as he slides to the ground there and in the process picks up the first down. They give him 14 yards that time and a fresh set of downs. On first and 10, it's Sanders. And he'll be stopped just outside the five at the six. He'll get two out of that run, and it's going to bring up a second and goal. Not a whole lot there on first and goal, and that's what you're looking for defensively. You'll certainly live with giving up just a yard or two in this situation. On second and goal, Hurts. Oh, that's into a double team, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Chandler Sullivan. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. The defense looked geared up to stop the run, but obviously, Charles, they were ready for the pass, too. Yeah, they were hoping they could catch everyone crashing and playing the run, but that was a very ill-advised throw right there. The opportunity lost. Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. They're sort of seeing themselves spiral out of control. Let's see if they can get things back on track. And this is where the coach is walking that line of being calm and really being firm with his team. Add one, tell me once, you know, when we're having a tough patch, this two shall pass, this two shall pass. And if I, we kept having a rough patch, he said, but you've got to do something <laughs> Heads up. to make it pass. And that's what they have to do. They've got to get some control back, get themselves reasserted, and calm things down. See if they can get calm and reassert themselves here. He's got a man complete. Touchdown, Vikings. Well, for as big and strong as some of these guys are, especially when you see them in full pads, it is sometimes hard to appreciate how truly fast they can move. That was incredible. Well, in this league where coordinators worry so much about drawing up the right routes, blocking assignments, misdirections and stuff, they have these precise arrows and movements. Sometimes the best plays just come from the schoolyard where you look at your fastest guy and say, go long, go get it, big man. But if you're wondering how fast he was going, next-gen stats clocked him at close to 21 miles an hour. And he is into the end zone to give him a two-point lead. So they go with a pass there on the two-point try and able to convert it, Charles. And a good job by the offense figuring out their two-point play and using it well. It's interesting how people are using the strategy nowadays, though, isn't it? It really is, and I don't know how much that one, that particular play factored in, but with the PAT moving back in 15-16, that kind of changed things, didn't it? It's really a part of everyone's strategy now. When I talk with coaches and when we sit with them, they always talk about they actually have two-point periods in practice now, something they never really did before. Come on, come on. The Eagles offense set to begin their next drive. In a close game like this, Charles, those interceptions like they had on the last drive could be costly, but here they've got another opportunity to seize control of this game. And they'd better take advantage of it because otherwise, if they end up losing by one score, they'll relive this over and over and over until they have another opportunity to wipe it away. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. Well, this defense is going to have to finish the job. There's still a second half that they have to play. But so far, an absolute total effort. They've disrupted the passing game, stressed the pocket for the quarterback. They forced him into errant throws. Everything they're doing has been executed well. Throwing his hurts. He's going deep for Brown. And the defense has it covered. It's intercepted. Picked by Cameron Bynum. And the Vikings force the turnover. They'll take over at their own 27. Second straight drive now here, Charles, that have ended with an interception. And I just wonder, because I don't think it's going to rattle him necessarily, but I also wonder if it's going to unnerve him a little bit. Does it lead to another one? Or does he find a way to pull it together and become sharp again? And he gets forward up the middle, but only for a couple. It'll be second down. They suspected that it was a power play up the middle coming at them. And boy, were they right. That defense got downhill in a hurry and limited them to just a couple on first down. Hey. 
The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. They go play action. Cousins. And that falls to the ground incomplete. A nice job of bodying him up defensively. And now it brings up third down. And that's one of those plays where it's hard to keep two eyes on the football when you know the contact's coming, let alone getting two hands around it, hugging it to your body, and absorbing the hit, even for those big tight ends who you would think could absorb that contact. On the jet sweep, here comes Jefferson. And he'll get nothing out of that one. Two minutes remaining in this first half of football. Cousins to throw for it on fours. That's caught by the big tight end, TJ Hawkinson. And he is going to pick up the Vikings first down as they manage to convert. And that'll keep the drive alive. So not only do they convert on fourth, but they pick up 22 yards in the process. Cousins gives way to Cook. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. Out on the edge, you love to have cornerbacks like that that can bring them down in the run game. And you're also exposed to everyone. It really becomes a one-on-one -on -one play, doesn't it? You're out there by yourself on the edge. The best ones know how to make the play, and we just saw an example of it right there. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. One well, of the great coaches said football is a really simple game. Rush theirs, protect yours. And he's talking about those guys throwing the football. In this situation, the rush one, hitting the quarterback and forcing him into an incompletion. Now play number seven of the drive as they're looking at a third and ten. Here's Cousins. He's got his man, T.J. Hawkinson. The Vikings going to signal for their first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with exactly a minute to go before halftime. And that's well executed there on third down, and I love the confidence that they had to let their tight end try and find some space in the middle of the field right in their quarterback's line of vision. And QBs love to make that easy throw, and they hooked up there for a first down. Cousins now to throw on first down. That is caught by Thielen. And they're going to get this down inside the 15. There's a first and 10 at the 14-yard line. He's into the secondary. Touchdown, Vikings! Cousins able to connect with Adam Thielen. And the Vikings will extend their lead in the final minute of the half. Greg Joseph on for the extra point. He's got it, and the lead moves to 15 to 6. Makes the score Vikings 15, Eagles 6. Now Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. Had no effort to bring this one out. It's a touchback. Already at the line, this Philly offense set to go. And with him down two scores, you wonder if they might try and put something together, even if it's just to get into field goal range. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. And past the 40 before he's out of bounds. Successful start to the drive, 17 yards, and moves the sticks. And not that the coach asked me, but I do like the call there to start the drive, looking for something maybe to jumpstart this offense. And they decide to run a little screen play, maybe give their running back a little bit of space. Mission accomplished. He turns that into good yardage and a quick first down. And he is going to lose yardage here. Not what they had in mind there. That's going to go as a loss of four. Well, I know it goes against the instincts of the person catching the ball because all you're ever taught is catch the football, don't drop it. But drop it there. Yeah, in that situation, <laughs> dropping it would have been better. End up losing yardage even though they completed the pass. As good as a sack. Yeah, how about that? Although they won't get the same credit for it, and it won't help them at contract time. 
Time for a break. We've hit halftime. Two quarters down. Two still remain. We step aside. This is the NFL on EA Sports. Welcome back. Halftime over. We are ready for quarter number three. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. It's the Eagles ready to see the football first, and they trail here as we resume action in this third quarter. And we will not see a return to start the half as this will be a touchback. offense set to begin their next drive. Charles, it'll be interesting to see what adjustments this offense made in the locker room. Haven't really been able to get anything going offensively. Virtually nothing in the ground attack either. So certainly something has to change here in quarter three. And I'm pretty sure their friends from the defensive side of the ball told them exactly that because those guys, the stop troops, they've been playing pretty well. They've kept them around in this game. Now they've got some time. The running game struggled in the first half. Opposition knows how to focus on defending the pass here. They've got to re-energize that ground game and maybe open things up for a comeback here in this half. He's going deep for Brown. That's caught inside the 20. Touchdown, Philadelphia. Quite a show of arm strength right there. That was in the air for a long time, and it was on target, too. And I'm telling you, nothing will let up a crowd more than a play like that. Here in the stadium, all eyes were on the receiver streaking downfield, and you know everyone was thinking, throw it, he's open. What a connection there for the touchdown. And that ball whew, traveling 68 yards in the air, according to Next Gen stats. Ready. Hertz will throw. And this one is caught. So they come up with a two-point conversion, and that makes this a one-point game now. Now after the touchdown, here's Elliott on to kick it away. Nuwangu now from his end zone. And tackled at the 21-yard line, so a net negative there of four yards. Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. On first and ten, Cousins. The quick throw finds T.J. Hawkinson. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. They'll try the middle with Cook. And he'll be taken down right around the 34 after a pickup of only a yard. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. Cousins now. And his pass is intercepted for the fourth time today. Picked off by James Bradbury. And the Eagles are going to take possession of the football. Well, look, we're watching a quarterback here that's obviously been around for a long time. That's a throw he wishes he had back. He certainly does, but as you well know, this is a guy that's used to taking a few chances, used to fitting it into tight windows. These are throws that he's made before. Didn't happen to get it completed in this case. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. I have to think a major focus of the halftime means had to be figured out how to create space for the running game to get operating. Well, what you pointed out to me at half seems accurate. That line has struggled to sustain blocks. Yeah, I would agree with that totally. They've got to focus on staying on their double teams at the first level, make sure that block's secure before they slide off and try and chip someone at the second level. And he'll work it inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. 
Kid had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one. Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. Hurts with a little pop pass on the jet sweep. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. It's a gain of 13 and a first down for Philadelphia. Boy, an effective play there, getting their wideouts involved in the run game. And what they're always hoping on that type of a play, that they can get to the end of the line and have a chance to turn it upfield as he did there. That means they controlled the blocking and took care of the defensive end or the outside linebacker to give him that lane. And I guess I need to clarify, I said getting their wideouts involved in the run game, but of course that was actually a pass as he popped it forward. Now he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Now that's what he can do you know, when he keeps the football. It's not a huge gain, but it shows how hard it can be to stop him. Yeah, and I thought the defense had that one pretty well contained, and in fact, they probably came up and felt pretty good about what they did. Then they looked up and realized he still got good yardage out of it. He's a tough guy to stop. It's a second down run with Sanders, and he'll be brought down here at the three-yard line. Come on, come on. Hurts. And he's going to be intercepted a third time. And the Vikings are going to get the football back at their own 17. Well, and I saw the pressure coming at him. That just looked problematic. Hit him as he threw it. And the interception ensued. Let me pay homage to the man who stood in this spot before. He always talked about how much pressure is in the face of a guy and can he step into a throw. And when you can't do that, Oftentimes, interceptions result. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. One play has him up past the 40 already, and another first and 10. Now a man open down the middle of the field. And he's going to get this down to the 35-yard line. And they're not going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back to back good plays have them on the move on first down. Cousins to throw it. Now look at this. They get the turnover they needed. It's intercepted. Chauncey Gardner-Johnson with a pick. Boy, they get him yet again, Charles. Five interceptions in this game. You rarely see this maybe a couple of times in a season, but in this defense, they've been fantastic. It's certainly an example of watching a defense that is in the zone, right? We use that term so often, but most of the time, it's for people who are on offense. In this case, it's the defense as a whole all locked in with each other, all ready to go. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Another run with Sanders. And he's got some space here. And he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. 79 yards rushing for him now as he's run it 11 times. Another carry for their leader and a good one. It's crunch time. They'll need him to continue to be productive in both the run and passing game in order for them to try and snatch a victory. But first down, Hurts. And his pass is intercepted for the fourth time today. And the Vikings will take over here just shy of the 30. I'm not sure I'm absolutely crazy about that play call there. I mean, it's only a one-score game, so is it really time to go bombs away and try and make a big play? I think you can take some underneath stuff and still move it downfield. Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. Another important fourth quarter series coming up, that last INT helping to maintain their slim advantage. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. The result, only four yards there on the play. And that will bring up second down. All defenses worry that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam come out of the backfield, 
It could turn into a big play with missed tackles where he runs through people. But they were right there waiting, and they stopped him for a minimal game. Throwing again on second down, but this time it's incomplete. We know it's not an easy job to go and catch passes when people try to tackle you and knock the ball away. But the bottom line is, that's a pass he's got to have and a pass he should have caught. The Vikings on third down, just one for three thus far. This will be third and six to throw Cousins. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. They get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. Cousins. Throw left side, taken in by Jefferson. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. And yeah, that's good for a gain of six, and it's second down. Cook up the gun. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. A first down throw for Cousins. And complete right side to Cook. And he is going to lose yardage here. Cousins now from the 50. And look at this. They get the turnover they needed. It's intercepted. Chauncey Gardner-Johnson with a pick. And the Eagles are right back in this football game. What a nightmarish game he's having now. Six interceptions that he has thrown. Absolutely unbelievable, isn't it? Hard to believe we're watching this and have seen it. But it just tells you about the game of football. It giveth and it taketh away. Yeah, the guys, though, that have thrown six intercepts. And that's intercepted yet again. And that could be the backbreaker. And he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. But Charles, you can just see the frustration on the sideline. Safe to say that's not how they expected this series to go. The ball only went one way, and it was backward into their own end zone, courtesy of the big six. And Brandon, how often do we hear offenses tell us before a game they want to end every series with a kick, right? A punt, a PAT, or a field goal? In the case of a defense, they want to end with a punt or a takeaway. And we saw the takeaway right there, and it turned out to be a takeaway that turned into six points. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. And here comes a return from the middle of the end zone. And he'll be dropped at the 21-yard line. So bringing it out of the end zone proves not a good decision. Loses him about four yards. the line this Philly offense set to go the interception sets them up with an opportunity to erase this fourth quarter deficit and this series could very well determine our outcome and now a throw on first down there but it's incomplete another throw there off the mark and obviously he's battled all of the interceptions things just haven't been true to form for him I don't know what he thinks going on out there CD that's a great question and my suspicion is He's been coached really well to not show that he's having a problem. You know, they always tell you, no matter what, you keep throwing the football with confidence. Well, we're not seeing a confident thrower right now. He's off balance, the passing game's off balance, and the defense is taking advantage. And he gets this one just shy of the 40, down at the 39. 
Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route, and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps, and cuts towards the middle of the field, and now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Throwing from the gun, it's Hurts. And he'll be hit as he releases it, and that'll fall incomplete. Limited time left on the clock after that incompletion, so I think both sides are going to savor every second to prepare before the next snap. Because once the ball's in motion, it may be a non-stop push to finish this drive off. Everyone better be on the same page right now, because I think they're going to try and get several plays off in quick succession if they can. He'll look to throw. He's going to let it fly. And that's going to be incomplete. Good effort there, trying to take a shot, but it's third down. Back-to-back -back incompletions, but we know this is definitely four-down territory. Time not on their side. I don't think they want to try and get the first down in two installments. I think they got to go and get it right here, right now. They'll look to throw. This is caught. It's Brown. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings' 38-yard line. He's back to throw. And it's incomplete. Boy, he doesn't drop many like that one. Second down. Ooh, that's certainly not the worst thing. It stops the clock and lets your offense catch its breath and lets us exhale a little bit. Now I expect them to call a couple plays in the huddle, so they're ready if a tackle happens inbounds. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. Third and long coming up defensively. You pressure the quarterback or drape ball over the passing lane? Yes, that's exactly what you do. It's both because <laughs> they're not mutually exclusive. They may have been at one time in football, but not anymore. You want to have that pressure. If you have a big-time pass rusher, send him after the quarterback and then make sure you blanket the field. The Vikings going to signal for the first of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. Back to throw. And now another one thrown incomplete. With that incompletion, reality is staring them right in the face. This entire game is down to the next snap. Going on fourth down with Hurts. Throw left side complete. That's Watkins. The Eagles going to take the first of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with just over a minute to go in the game. A new lease on life after the fourth down conversion. Here's first and ten. Back to throw. Again, that's Watkins. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. Now another timeout called for by the offense as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds left to go in the game. First and goal, a touchdown and a two-point conversion here are musts. Here's Hurts to throw. Escaping the pressure right. And he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. 
Daniil Hunter in there to take him down, and the clock will roll. First down, a bit of a disaster, and now on second and goal, back even further. Hurt sets up to throw it. And that's intercepted yet again, and that could be the backbreaker. Andrew Booth picks it off. He's at the 40, the 20, 10, and he will take this one home. It's a touchdown.